Hello and welcome friends, I'm Mr. Rainlap here and another episode for you. As you can see a lot of things happened. One side of the board is almost completed. So in today's video I will just walk you through all the new features, uh, new houses and my reasoning uh, for building it in that way. You will see that uh, even though all the structures are standing, uh, there are some small elements missing. Like some doors are not covered yet and there are railings missing or some catwalks but all those uh, features will be added later on when the whole board is kind of completed okay so let's jump straight into it uh, first building here as you can see one of the towers is still unfinished to be honest i'm not sure how to make it yet but i will figure it out i've seen a few parts as you can see for ease of storage transportation and i was considering to just uh, make maybe a, another part for this uh, spot some smaller ruined tower and let's see how it will work out okay and uh, here you have uh, one of the new buildings just hanging there on this uh, cliff and overlooking the river with the structures like that is quite straightforward i mean main focus here is to make uh, as much playable space as possible inside the house and also around it i mean all those streets look quite narrow even though i can remove some pieces there but uh, everything was tested so it's possible to put your hand there place miniature that's also important part uh, with board like that to be able to reach to every part of the board and uh, be comfortable with uh, placing your models there there is also some catwalk missing. As I mentioned before, I will just add it in post-production. And yeah, another important part uh, of this uh, board, as you can see, this house, but also other ones are just placed uh, on a connection points between the tiles. It was really important for me just to be able to hide as many of those connection points as possible under the houses. And now we'll have a fast look on the river area. There are already in place some supports for the wooden uh, sidewalks and another cool feature here uh, is this broken barge i mean the main reasoning behind it is of course uh, it's adding to overall look of the board but also create some extra playable space uh, in the river area and now we will look on another house i have approached it a little different than my other constructions maybe you are able to see it right away here the whole house is made out of two separate pieces that's supposed to connect seamlessly with each other. In retrospect, I mean uh, it could have been done as a one big piece, but it was nice to try something new and I think uh, it looks okay with all the paint on uh, and everything you will not be able to see the connection line. And one of those critical spots here for tiles on meeting. So it was really important to, to hide this spot and put the house on top of it. It takes a little planning to do that, but I think it's really worth it. And it will improve overall look of the board when it's completed. I mean, uh, that's one of the benefits of making a stationary setup of the board like that. You can really focus on those small details and uh, try to push them to the limits. So that's basically it on this side of the board. Oh yeah, and let's fix this one to the right position. Sometimes it's uh, hard to put it back uh, while holding a camera, recording, moving around. And some close-ups of the narrow pathways between the houses. I really like this idea of claustrophobic small spaces. I was really trying to balance it, you know, ease of access, but also possibility to easily place your miniatures there and be able to navigate. Let's move now to another side of the board. As you can see, there are two tiles uh, missing. Uh, for the ease of recording, I just removed them, but uh, we'll talk about that in another video. There's still more houses to come there. And let's have a look on this side of the river. Yeah, the same situation here. There will be some uh, wooden sidewalks around. Still missing. And the sewer entrance. Yeah, 
the broken barge. And the in area we covered in uh, one of the previous videos. Okay, here we are, another new house. And as you can see, it's quite destroyed one. The whole area is really packed with another structures. So it was important to build something that will look cool, but would allow access to other structures and streets below. And of course it's removable. You can see a battery spot for the ground lights. Not yet there, only the cables. There is a ton of narrow spaces around this house between the in area and uh, from the other direction but it's uh, possible to place the miniatures and navigate with your hand so uh, it's not that bad and here we have some uh, close-ups from the street level the same as with other buildings i was trying to make as many entry points to the structure as possible so you can't lock yourself in or isolate and uh, make it for another warband to uh, have a problems with reaching it and now we will go to the last building as you can see there is a little more happening here so first of all uh, one side of this structure is totally gone collapsed of course there is no rubble but everything will come with time also allows uh, easier access to the inner courtyard behind it with your hand so you can place miniatures quite easily there and now let's have a look on the inside of this building i decided to make this inner wall uh, almost not existing so the whole uh, second floor area can be used as a one platform for miniatures and now let's focus on an extra feature as you probably noticed, there is a lantern attached to the house. And I will try to turn it on. I mean, it's a little hard to do it with uh, one hand, but it worked. So here it is. I decided to place it under the balcony, so uh, it's a little more safe. And here you have the switch mechanism. As you can see, it's still uncovered. There will be some kind of plate on top of it, maybe a skull sculpture or something like that. And now let's move to the other side of the building. And here it is, the second lantern. I thought, uh, why not to make uh, right away uh, two lights connected to the same power source. And it nicely illuminating both sides of this building and also the streets below. So uh, I'm really looking forward to see it uh, painted and dark so we can really see those lights coming to life. And now we'll move to uh, houses we looked on before, but uh, from the other side. There are some uh, balconies, pathways leading to the river area. And in general, a lot of uh, irregularities that will uh, make this building look a little more compelling. And uh, extra catwalks and just space to place miniatures and play on. And one of the narrow paths between the buildings uh, we talked about before. Some small raised areas in the last building we talked already about, but uh, from different perspective. As you can see, the top part is missing. I will build something there later on. Catwalk 2. Yeah, all those small details will be uh, fixed uh, later on. Hey guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little longer than uh, previous ones, but as you can see, a lot of progress was done. So uh, it takes a while to talk it through and show you around. So let me know what you think about it uh, in the comments down below. And if you have any extra questions, I will be glad to answer. Signing out.